Sauce FX. Hello there, this is Xiao, and welcome to the 16th episode of my 17 part series on getting a great vocal sound. If you've been following me up to this point, you know what this series is about performance recording mixing. Last time, I went over how to use a compressor to even out the volume levels of your vocal. If you haven't seen this video yet, go check it out. Today, I'll be explaining limiters, gates, multiband compressors, and de-essers, and how to use them to further improve your mixes. So let's get started. Limiters! As mentioned in the last video, the ratio control on a compressor determines how much compression is applied once the audio crosses the threshold. The higher the ratio, the greater the compression. I also mentioned that I usually set the the ratio on my vocal compressors to 3 to 1. This means that the part of the audio that crosses the threshold is reduced to one third as high as it would normally be at that point, which allows the compressor to contain any stray peaks in the audio and level out the volume a bit. But sometimes you really need to squash the signal to keep things in check, and 3 to 1 might not be enough. That's where limiters come in. A limiter is a compressor that has a ratio of 10 to 1 or higher, which reduces any threshold crossing signal to 1 one tenth as loud as it would be at that point. That's some heavy compression, enough to contain most vocal spikes. The average stock compressor has a ratio that can be set to at least 10 to 1, so almost any compressor can be used as a limiter. However, some limiters have ratios that are so high that nothing can cross their threshold. Such limiters are known as hard limiters, or brick wall limiters, because their threshold is like an impenetrable brick wall, which is why it's often called a ceiling. Hard limiters also generally have have very fast attack times so that they can capture any and all peaks of the audio. So here we have our pizza song. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. Now let's take a look at limiters in action using FL Studio's Fruity Limiter. Now the vocal is already pretty well contained, but say we wanted to compress it further. Let's turn up the ratio to limiting levels. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My favorite pizza topping. So now it's at 10 to 1, and the vocal is getting pretty compressed, but it doesn't sound all that bad proof of how much compression a vocal can take. The ratio on this compressor goes all the way up to 20 to 1, so you can really smash things if you wanted to. Let me just set that back to 3 to 1. This plugin also has a built-in hard limiter, which I currently have turned off. Let's engage it. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni sausage now the ceiling is currently way above the audio. This can be helpful for catching any huge spikes, but it won't really do much up here. Let's bring it down really low and see what happens. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My as you can see in here, nothing gets past the hard limiter. Now I don't usually use them on vocals, but I always use one on my master mix bus. Every track in the mix goes through here before being output to my speakers. I use a hard limiter here in two ways. First, while I'm mixing, I have the ceiling set to 0 dB with no makeup gain. That way, it catches any stray audio spikes that might happen if a plugin acts weird or if I accidentally turn things up too loud. This protects my speakers and my ears. As is the case with most things, safety first. The other way I use it is at the end of my mixing, when everything's all ready to go. I set the ceiling to minus 0.1 dB and turn up the makeup gain so that the loudest peaks of the audio just brush the ceiling. I call this process frosting the tips. This maximizes the loudness of my mix while guaranteeing that none of my audio clips, unless it was clipped in the recording process. Not a lot that I can do about that. I won't turn up the mix bus limiter now because my mix isn't done yet. Now and here's an important point. In order for this to work, the hard limiter has to be the very last plugin in your signal path so that it can contain everything in your mix. If you have, say, an EQ or a compressor after your hard limiter, there's no guarantee that the signal won't clip. Gates! 
A gate is basically a compressor in reverse. Instead of compressing the audio above the threshold, it compresses the audio below the threshold. This may seem counterproductive, but the way it's used is actually pretty ingenious. Say you just recorded a vocal, and you're really happy with it, but you don't have time to go through and edit it to remove the low-end background noise. You can use a gate to turn down the volume between the words in a recording, which is why this plugin is often referred to as a noise gate. It allows you to quickly and easily turn down background noise in a vocal. Let's take a look at gates in action. On the right side here is the noise gate. It has three controls. Gain reduction, threshold, and release. Some gates also have attack controls. To use it, you turn up the threshold so that it's just above the background noise. Then you turn up the gain reduction. The release on here is set to 50 milliseconds, which should be fine. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My, my favorite. In fact, I can turn it up high enough to completely eliminate the breaths in this vocal. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My favorite. Now, a couple things about noise gates. First, if you set the threshold too high, it starts to trigger while the vocalist is singing, which makes the vocal sound choppy. Second, if the gate is triggering too quickly, turn up the release time for a smoother fade out. Finally, don't set the gain reduction to maximum. This will make the sudden silence between words much more noticeable, which will sound weird, especially if you recorded with other instruments in the room. It's better to just turn down the background noise rather than completely silencing it. Now, noise gates aren't perfect. It can sometimes be hard to set the threshold at just the right spot so that it catches all the background noise but doesn't cut into the vocal. Further, noise gates can't deal with constant background noise during spoken words. To deal with that, you need to use the noise removal tool I showed you in the mix prep video from before. That being said, they're very easy to use and can be a nice alternative to time-consuming audio editing. Multiband compressors! As I explained before, a compressor is an automatic volume control that can even out the dynamics of an instrument. But it's a very broad brush tool. A standard compressor applies the same amount of compression evenly across all frequencies. However, this can cause a standard or single band compressor to act strangely if some frequencies in the audio are more dynamic than others. A multiband compressor doesn't have this problem. Like an EQ, it breaks down the audio into multiple frequency control points or bands. But instead of just controlling the volume of those bands, each band is actually its own mini compressor. This allows you to apply compression differently to different parts of the frequency spectrum. A multiband compressor also usually has a master compressor after each of the bands to apply additional compression to the whole sound. So here we have Maximus, my go-to multiband compressor. As you can see, the spectrum is broken up into three bands, low, medium, and high, and each band has its own compressor, as well as a master compressor. You can also set the crossover point for each of the bands so that they affect different frequencies. Let's see this in action. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. Those were just some random compression settings, just, just to show that I have different settings on each of the bands. Now, I don't generally use multiband compression on my vocals, with one key exception, which I'll get to later. But like a hard limiter, I almost always use a multiband compressor on my master mix bus. However, multiband mix bus compression is a topic that's beyond the scope of this tutorial series. In and of itself, it's a somewhat complicated process. Further, the way you apply it varies based on the genre of music you're working with. I've put links in the description to three different tutorials on how to use a multiband compressor on your mix bus. Your mileage may vary for how useful they are. For everyone else, let's move on.
DSers! Microphones don't hear frequencies the same way humans do. One very common example of this is how condenser mics tend to overemphasize the frequencies associated with S and T sounds. The buildup of these high frequencies is known as sibilance. Many people find excessive sibilance to be annoying. I'm sure you've noticed a singer or a public speaker that made you cringe every time they said a word with an S in it. Well, lucky for you, audio engineers are well aware of the harshness of sibilance and have invented a tool specifically for dealing with it, the de -esser. Now, you could just use an EQ to turn down those frequencies, but that would cause the vocal to sound muffled and strange. A de -esser is a special kind of compressor that targets sibilant frequencies and only turns them down when they become a problem. Let me show you. Remember when I said that I only use multiband compressors on vocals for a specific reason? This is it. Currently, FL Studio does not have a designated de-esser plugin. However, in a pinch, you can use any old multiband compressor as a de-esser, because that's what a de-esser is, a multiband compressor that ignores all frequencies except for those that cause sibilance. Indeed, Maximus here comes with two de-esser presets. I'll be using the split band one for this example. Basically, you go through and you disable the compression on all the bands except for one. At that point, it functions just like a de-esser. So let's dig in. A de-esser generally lets you control two things. First, you can set which frequencies it targets. Sibilance usually exists somewhere in the 3 to 10 kilohertz range. The specific spot varies from person to person, so you have to find it. Most de-essers make it really easy to do this, thanks to the listen or solo button, which lets you hear just the frequencies in the target range. A quick note, it's easiest to find sibilance if you find a particular part of the vocal with a lot of S sounds. Let's use this word, the sausage. This word sausage right here as our example. The sausage and bacon, my favorite pizza toppy. The sausage, the sausage, and the sausage. Basically, try to set it so that the de-esser only hears sibilance and nothing else. Second, a de-esser lets you control how much compression is applied in that range. Usually this is a pretty straightforward gain reduction control, but since we're using a multiband, we have more options. But I don't generally mess with them, and I just set the gain reduction up here. Knee sausage and bacon. Knee sausage and knee sausage and bacon. Knee sausage and bacon. Let's listen in the track. Knee sausage, knee sausage, knee sausage, knee sausage, knee sausage and bacon. I think that sounds pretty good. Speaking of which, how much compression should you apply? The rule is pretty simple. Apply enough compression that the sibilance is no longer distracting, but not so much compression that the vocal sounds weird. If they start to sound like they have a lisp, that's too much compression. Basically, set it by ear and you'll be fine. Anyway, that's all I wanted to cover here. If you liked what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want more information or have any questions about limiters, gates, multiband compressors, and de comment below. I'm always open for questions. And as always, if you'd like to request a VoxFX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it. Next time, I'll talk about reference mixing, preventing ear fatigue, and the master rule of audio engineering. Until then, have fun and keep making sound. Fox FX. <laughs>